Hey guys, what's up? I'm Slim and you're watching Slimothy TV. This is probably the video you guys have all been waiting for. The Inkbird IAMT1 versus the Aeronet 4. This is an ultimate showdown here between these two devices. These are very popular devices right now. People want to know what their CO2 is for ventilation purposes. CO2 is interesting because if your room doesn't have good ventilation, it's going to cause usually a higher CO2 level. And that means that if you're in a room with a sick person and a high CO2 level, there's probably not a lot of air exchange there. There's possibly a higher chance that you would get sick in that room with that person than a room with better airflow, which would then result in lower CO2 and maybe a less chance of getting sick. That's just what I've heard. That's what I believe businesses kind of use to gauge their airflow to see what's going on. So I highly recommend having one of these in your house, but it comes down to which one do you want? Aeronet 4 is tried, true, and trusted by a lot of people. These things like the OG CO2 detector. Our review has gone nuts. We got tons of views on that one. Inkbird IAMT1 is the new kid on the block. And what are the differences? First off, let's talk about dimensions. The Aeronet is quite a bit smaller, actually. I didn't think it was at first, but putting them side by side, you can really tell that the Aeronet is smaller. So if you want something super portable for your car, for an airplane when you're going, or just to bring into a coffee shop, the Aeronet 4 wins in portability because it is a slight bit smaller. Next up, we got to talk about the developers. As far as I can tell, Aeronet is a European company. Inkbird is Chinese, so take that for what you will. You guys can choose what you want there. Let's talk about looks. Uh, I think this is totally subjective. I personally prefer the Aeronet 4's design just a little bit more because I like this translucent design. I think it looks really cool because you can kind of see the internals a little bit, but I can definitely see some people liking the Inkbird with this little canvas down here, a little bit of raised branding right there at the bottom. You can take your pick on that it's subjective, but I personally like the Aeronet 4 just a little bit better. Next up, let's talk about the displays. The Aeronet 4 has a much smaller display than the Inkbird, but you can tell that the numbers and stuff are not much bigger on the Inkbird. So there's a lot more screen in there, but it also almost looks like there's a lot of dead space in there too. So I'm more used to this layout, but I do recognize that the slightly bigger numbers on the Inkbird could be beneficial to some people, especially from further distances. Obviously they're both e-ink displays, so you can see them great from any angle which is always good. I believe both of them have identical battery lives. Could be wrong on this, but I think it's four years for each if you set it to 10 minute intervals. I do five minute intervals, so maybe two years of battery. They're just two double A's I think in both. Nothing too crazy there. So that's kind of the superficial stuff. What about the numbers? Well, you can already tell how close these are with regards to pretty much everything except humidity. I mean, these things are crazy close. They claim to be plus or minus 30 PPM for CO2, or at least for this one. I think this one as well. Uh, so, you know, they're very close. They're always within 30 of each other uh, for sure. So that means they're probably within 30 of the actual CO2 levels. Now, after Aeronet sent me this device for review, I actually went out and purchased my own from Amazon just to make sure I didn't get some juiced unit that was super good. And I can tell you the other Aeronet that I have that I purchased with my own money, I actually ended up giving that to my fiance for now. That one was pretty much identical to this one. So I can tell you that these are very, very close. I also have another CO2 monitor that's a different brand. So I know that these are very accurate. These are both updating once a minute because that's what I've got them set to. They can do one, two, five, or 10 minute intervals. I like five minutes, but one minute's good for display just to show you guys. So as I'm talking here, obviously they're gonna go up a little bit from CO2 from my voice as it goes into the side channels uh, of these devices. This one's pretty small. They both have wall mount kits. So you can use that if you want. So you can see CO2 levels, almost identical always within 30 ppms of each other for the most part. Moving around like this could skew that a little bit, but you get the idea. When they're just sitting on your desk, I've seen them multiple times be exactly the same, which is kind of crazy. Temperature, you can see 68.9, 68.7. They're almost always within 0.1 of each other, which is crazy. Humidity is 50% here, 43 here. I think the Inkbird's a little high um, because I have a ton of other sensors. Like in the studio where I keep this one to test, I think I have maybe six other humidity sensors in there. They're usually right around here. So I think this one's closer. This one's a little bit high. Hopefully this one will come down with time, but who knows? You can always manually adjust it in the app, but I don't like doing that as much as possible. Obviously battery life's good. I can't really speak much on that because I haven't had to change either of them. You can see the green, yellow, red. You can see kind of how they do it. I personally don't have a huge preference. I kind of like Aeronet 4 is better. Inkbird is also classy. So just depends what you like. So that's that. Now let's talk about the apps because that's where things might make or break this for you. So you can see here, uh, my other Aeronet for my fiance, she's got that uh, in another country right now. So obviously I can't connect to that with Bluetooth. However, I can show you this one, Slim Aeronet right here, uh, 760, 760. And you can see everything is lining up. Now you can't see the pressure, 
on this device, but you can from the app. So you can just click on it and it's going to transfer all of this data over right now. So we'll wait. And I love how you can just kind of scroll through this and look at what it was at any given time. Let's go to seven days and you can kind of see how that works. It gives you the highest, the lowest. I kind of wish it did average, but I don't know. It doesn't. Then you've got temperature, humidity, and atmospheric pressure. Pretty cool stuff here. Uh, that's about it. Obviously in the settings here, you can change stuff about the measurement interval, the buzzer, and you can of course update the firmware. It's got the serial number, which is why I am scrolling down a little bit so you can't see that, but that's pretty much it. Very basic, but I really do like this app. Now for the Inkbird, this one here, uh, this one is a little different. So here's the app for that. I'm gonna click on it and you can see everything lines up just perfectly here with what it's got. So if I click on the data tab here, it will pull in all of the data from this device, which it claims is not sent to the cloud anywhere claims it's just between the device. I don't really know of a good way to test that unless someone wants to get real nerdy with Wireshark and try to figure out what this app's doing in the background. For the most part, I do trust them that they are just sending this between this device. We can see their graph is a little bit more smoothed out and you can't really scroll the way that I was scrolling on the other. You kind of just have to tap on a point to get that percentage, which is totally fine. You can switch it from one day, one week, one year, three months if you want. And then of course you can go to humidity, temperature, actually temperature, humidity, and then the atmospheric pressure, which of course lines up with what the other one was showing. In the settings here, you can rename it, change the units, device offline notification, sampling interval, CO2 alarm, firmware version, which I can't get to work by the way, don't know why. Maybe when there's an actual update, it'll do it, who knows. Calibration, you can calibrate this one. You can calibrate the other one too, but you probably don't want to. Uh, and then of course you've got the app alarm, which if you want to set a threshold, you can do that right here. So that's the app, they're both different, but uh, it just depends which interface you like better, which company you trust more. I believe with the Aeronet, you cannot calibrate the temperature or the humidity, as far as I can tell. I think it's just CO2. But uh, also, you do have Bluetooth range, normal and extended, which I thought was pretty neat. So I think if you do extend it, it uses a little more power. You might be able to get a little range. The Inkbird has crazy good range, though. I can already tell you that right off the bat. I think that the range on the Inkbird might be a little bit better than the Aeronet, or maybe it just outputs a little more power for that Bluetooth stuff, so something to keep in mind. So that is a quick overview of these two devices. And realistically, it comes down to what's gonna look better in your house. It's obviously hard to see them like this. That's why I have them laid down. Uh, I've had comments on other videos in the past saying, well, of course it's not accurate, it's laying down. Well, this is a video. It's a top-down camera shot. There's not much I can do about that. But when, obviously when you're using them, they're upright. So yeah, you just have to decide which one you like better because the sensors in these, like I said, they're very close. Uh, I do trust the Aeronet just slightly bit more because it's more tested and proven, but this one is usually a little cheaper. That's where the hard decision making has to come in by you. You have to choose which one you want. I think right now they both are on sale, at least at the time of recording this video. I know it's around the holidays, so they are on sale, you know, here and there. I will drop links down below so you guys can check them out for yourself. See which one is cheaper, which one you like more. I think right now if I had to pick just one winner, I would pick the Aeronet just because it's a little bit smaller and I like the design just a slight bit more you can't go wrong with either one of them. They both work really well. So check them out. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are down below. Do you have either of these? And uh, what are your thoughts? You prefer one over the other? I'd be interested to hear what you guys have to say. So links down below, like I said, thumbs up, subscribe, peace.